song that the twelve for him has given. I remember those days when I was part of that group in Central Philippine Adventist College. That was 1998 up to 2001. I belong to the second batch of that group in which uh, one of the original pioneer members of uh, the 12 for him, K. 
came from this church. She is a product of uh, Seventh-day Adventist Church here in Takuling, Sister Verlishe Gayatin. With the fact, when I learned last Sabbath that he, she came home, I told her mother, Dayaon si Xing Xing, kay Waigid nagpabalo sa ako, nga nagpuli siya. At logoro pangayuan chocolate. And also, I praise the Lord for giving uh, me this opportunity once again to stand before you here. The first, very first Sabbath of my parents with us here in this church, I spoke that Sabbath. And today, this will be their last Sabbath with us, hopefully at this time hoping that there will be another time that they will be able to be with us. Their last Sabbath with us because this coming Friday I will be bringing them back to the Cagayan de Oro City to join with uh, my elder brother and the family. And also, I also praise God for this attendance that uh, we are having each Sabbath, I could not, uh, even if I will compare this attendance to those fellowships and uh, association meetings that I experienced in the district where I have the last uh, district I have has 19 churches could not compare to this attendance brethren I have estimated about six to eight hundred attendance every Sabbath so if this will be filled each seat will be filled with uh, uh, the congregation we will have at least a one a thousand so it is quite a big uh, a big number of a congregation and I praise God that I am given this uh, experience this opportunity to experience this kind of uh, this kind of set up inside the church I believe that each one has been preparing themselves for our communion service. We are set today, and aside from that, we are also uh, scheduled to have our prayer, praying and fasting after the communion service will be done. And uh, to set our hearts, ourselves, brethren, I will talk to you a not very isolated topic in the Bible, but one of the most common passages that we could found in the Gospels of Matthew and in the book of Mark. When I was in the elementary grade, I could not really forget, even now, the song for the kids, I have two hands, the left and the right. And then the song goes, hold them up high, so clean and bright. You know that song? Once upon a time, there was that great urgency felt by the scribes and the Pharisees that they really wanted to see Jesus to talk about the attitude of his disciples coming from Jerusalem to Nazareth is estimated to be about 400 kilometers away let me say this way if I walk from here going to Escalante city 
that is only about 94 or 96 kilometers. And I walk with a speed of 5 kilometers per hour and will continue to do that in the same speed for 8 hours. It will take me about 10 days to have 5 round trips Bacolod to Escalante to complete the 400 kilometers. That is how far Jerusalem to Nazareth. No one will walk that far if he does not see the importance of the meeting. But anyway, these scribes and the Pharisees just came to Nazareth to talk and confront Jesus about something. They said, why do your disciples transgress the trans tradition of the elders? For they do not wash their hands whenever they eat bread. Who are these people? As scribes, they were considered the copyists or the secretaries made the copying of the scriptures from the Hebrew to Greek. And yet we know, we all knew about them. But one thing, brethren, about these scribes, when they are writing the scriptures, doing the copying or the translation from Hebrew to Greek, they were very extra careful in that they should have to be baptized several times for cleansing. And when they do the writing, they have always two pens for that. One for the ordinary words and the other for the word Yahweh. They never do the copying of scriptures without taking a bath. Pero sa atom, we just easily come to our room, take out our Bibles from where we came from, that evening washing our hands. Even if almost done copying a page of the scriptures, they have to discard that piece of paper if the name of Yahweh was misspelled or when even just a letter, letter is mistakenly written. For us, it's very easy. When you write something, and then may magsala ng isa kalitra, what do we usually do? Scratch or maybe, oftentimes we just double it. Okay? Sulatan natin over that letter. Ala, hasta nga mag, instead of letter B, kay nagsala kita, we put it letter C because that is the right uh, letter to be there. So, Okay? But for them, the whole page, if that is the case, was being defined. How about the Pharisees? We know them very much. They are known as the strictest commandment keepers. They even formulated hundreds of ordinances in order to keep a single law. They don't deal or talk or even mingle with the non-Pharisees or even non-Hebrew for fear of contamination. I'm sorry because I have a little problem here with my laptop. In other words, these scribes and Pharisees have clean hands, but with dirty hearts. They are clean outside, but we don't know what is inside. I don't know. That's why in Matthew chapter 23, there were at least six or seven woes that Jesus Christ has mentioned to them. Few of these, Jesus said, Woe to you blind guides, for you have rejected the video professions of the law. That is justice and mercy. 
Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, for you clean the outside of the cup and of the dish, but inside they are full of robbery and self-indulgence. What happened to me now? Maybe this is still the remains of the flu that I, uh, I am experiencing. Woe for you, for you are like whitewashed tombs, which on the outside appear beautiful, but inside they are full of dead men's bones and all uncleanness. Even so, you too, Christians, seven Adventists, outwardly appear righteous to men, but inwardly you are full of hypocrisy and lawlessness. Scribes and Pharisees were so upset of the disciples mingling with the publicans and eating bread with unwashed hands. For us, we have no problem, especially in our present times. We have no problem. We have so many uh, ways of sanitizing our hands. We have the rubbing alcohol, different kinds of rubbing alcohol, hand sanitizers, soap, safeguard. Okay. Where all these are promoting to eliminate germs. To them, to the scribes and the Pharisees, this question is a matter of life or death to the plight of the disciples. That it seemed they themselves will die or will be contaminated if the disciples will continue to eat with unwashed hands. They become more meticulous of the external rather than the internal cleanliness. In other words, they are more interested in having clean hands rather than clean hearts. There is uh, what we call the con godliness. Con means swindler, according to the dictionary, fraud, cheater, scum, artist, fraudster. Con godliness, it means the internal filthiness was covered by the external cleanliness. They are the make-believe godly people. I hope, brethren, that we don't have that kind of Adventist members here in our congregation. They are called the Christian in a mask. And then we remember the, the song that has been popularized by Nat King Cole, The Great Pretender. I don't have to sing that. I know you know that, sing, that song. How I wish, again, not one in our midst is in a mask. And then Jesus replied, in verses 8 to 9 in Matthew chapter 15, Jesus said, You hypocrites, you honor me with your lips, in other words, with your hands, but their heart is far away from me. But in vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines the precepts of men. And in verse 11, Jesus said, not what enters into the mouth defiles the man, but what proceeds out of the mouth, this defiles the man. The Tari law, many of the people around us nowadays are telling, and we should be careful with this text, because actually Jesus was not making this statement to invalidate the Tari law. I would like to share to you one here in my Bible. There are lots of versions nowadays. If I should read here in verse 19 of Mark 7 in my Bible, we should be careful of this because I know that this is not the only Bible. This is not the only version that has these words. It says here, Since it enters not the heart but the stomach and goes out into the, so into the sewer, thus... He declared all foods clean. Okay? My Bible has an open, close parenthesis and others. But there are few versions of the Bible 
that has now open close parenthesis and we should be careful for that what does this open close parenthesis means it simply means brethren especially the young people that this open the words in the open close parenthesis are the translator's own words and that does not come from the original Hebrew Bible so again the statement of Jesus does not invalidate the dietary law the subject here that we are talking is about the eating bread without washing hands for God the looks of a man that determines who he is before the Lord not his physical features nor his economic status not that he has an expensive barong or she has an old ugly sandals not that you have a brand new car while others has only an old sikad sikad nor either all these things can bar or qualify us to the kingdom of God brethren let me remind you that when God ordained David to the throne to be the next king of Israel he told the prophet Samuel when Samuel saw the older sons of Jesse God told him do not look at his appearance or at the height of his stature because I have rejected him for God sees not as man sees for man looks at the outward appearance the hands but the Lord looks at the heart what is visible in the hands brethren can be deceptive and can make pretensions what is in the heart is the real intention of man thus only God knows them and then Jesus continued in verse 17 do you not understand when his disciples came to ask him privately he told them do you not understand that everything that goes into the mouth passes into the stomach and then later on that will be eliminated but the things that proceed out of the mouth come from the heart and those that define the man we are exactly told here that it should we have to put an end with these external formalities Jesus has already observed so much of those external amenities among the Pharisees who seem to be righteous outside but inside is wickedness the Jews have already reduced the way of life and righteousness to a mere matter of conduct ethics and behavior to the scribes and Pharisees they were after the cleanness of the hand but Jesus is after the cleanness of the heart amen for out of the heart come evil thoughts vulgar deeds stealing murder and faithfulness in marriage greediness meanness deceitfulness indecency envy insults pride and foolishness all of this come from your heart brethren all of these things that Christ has mentioned that comes out from our mouth come from our hearts they are what make us unfit to worship God what does Ellen White said in reminding all those who believe and wanted to follow the Lord she said those who do evil with their gossiping tongues who sow discord by selfish ideas and thoughts by any jealousies evil surmising or covetousness they grieve the Holy Spirit of God why later she said because they are working entirely the lines the enemy has marked out what does our church manual said the church manual says that we have to discipline those brethren who are still eating pork 
Our church manual said that we have to discipline those who smoke. Our church manual said that we have to discipline those who still taste, even just have a sip of liquor. And above all, our church manual disciplines adultery. But here's one thing, brethren. What does the church manual provide against pride? Gossip. Professional jealousy. Hatred. Anger. Greediness. Slander. Or even texting inside the church. Nothing. Pag nagsala ang atong speaker, dayon kakuha sa iya cellphone to matex. But our church manual has nothing to say what are to be done to this brethren. Imagine, even just a delay or even just a few seconds of what the speaker is supposed to say. She could not immediately continue. We are very quick. I am very sorry to tell you to address this one here. Plenty of our church members here are very quick to say, <clears throat> In the book that I may know him, page 184, Mrs. White said, Floating rumors are frequently the destroyers of unity among brethren. There are some who watch with open mind and ears to catch flying scandals. They gather up little incidents which may be trifling in themselves, but which are repeated and exaggerated. Their motto seems to be report or maybe text or maybe post and I will share it. Let us diligently cultivate the pure principles of the gospel of Christ. The religion, not of self-esteem, but of love, meekness, lowliness of heart. Amen. I will repeat. Let us diligently cultivate the pure principles of the gospel of Christ. The religion, not of self-esteem, but of love, meekness, and lowliness of heart. Thank you very much. And we shall love our brethren and esteem them better than ourselves. Our minds will not dwell on the dark side of their character. It should not dwell on the dark side of the character of others. And Mrs. White strongly says, We shall not feast in scandal and flying reports. St. Paul reminded us also in Philippians. He said, Don't be jealous or proud, but be humble and consider others more important or, more, or far more better than yourselves. Care about them as you are, as you care about yourselves. This is the exact definition of the words of Christ when he said that the second greatest commandment is to love others, same as you love yourself. We have to consider others better than ourselves. That doesn't mean, I believe. And the mind of Jesus is to, for us to have a low self-esteem. No. Okay. In Philippians chapter 4 verse 8, Whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, brethren, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think of these things. Shall we look at the next slide? 
those kind of animals can be trained by a junior turbanos. I don't know if he has that uh, skill anyway. But the point is, monkeys can be trained. Next, please. Dolphins as well. Okay. And also elephants. Okay. For, uh, sh for a show. And then crocodiles. And every other creature can be trained, can be taught. But here's a very strong statement of an apostle of God recorded in James chapter 1 verse 26. He said, Do any of you think you are religious? Can we say amen to this? Any of us can we say that we are religious? Amen. This statement actually strikes me as well. If you do not control your tongue, your religion is worthless and deceive yourself. If the Malacanian Palace, and we all know our new elected uh, president has finally taken an oath last uh, Thursday. Yeah, last Thursday. And if Malacanian Palace might not need a pure heart, the new heaven, I believe, brethren, need such a pure heart. There is an appeal for each one of us. Actually, if you will only study deeper this passage in Proverbs chapter 23, verse 26, not only King Solomon, but Jesus himself is talking to each one of us. What does he say? My son, give me your heart and let thine eyes observe my ways. The psalmist also said, cried bitterly before the Lord when he realized how wicked was he. He said, have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. And then lastly he said, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. May this prayer of David, brothers and sisters, will be ours as well this morning. Create in me a new heart. There is a song in closing. I will not really sing this song because uh, I could not do it this time. But the lines of the song I would like to share to you. What shall I give the Master? Then there's a, there goes on the next uh, two slides, please. What shall I give the Master? Thou who didst die for me, what shall I give? Or shall I give less of what I possess? Or shall I give all to thee? What shall I give thee, Master? Thou hast redeemed my soul. My gift is small, but it is my own, surrendered to thy control. What shall I give thee, Master? Giver of gifts divine, I will not hold time, talents, or gold, for everything shall be thine. And then the chorus of that song goes on. Jesus, my Lord and Savior, Thou hast given all for me. Thou didst leave thy home above to die on Calvary. What shall I give thee, Master? Thou hast given all for me. Not just a part or half of my heart. I will give all to thee. Well, I would like to request everybody 
to read with me the last orange portion of that slide here. Okay, shall we start? Not just a part or half of my heart, I will give all to you. He died for us. He did it for you and me. What is your move? Friends, we must live with clean hands and clean hearts. By the grace of God, let us all try to be living ourselves to have a clean, not only in our outward appearance, but also inside our hearts. We are now ready to go and depart ourselves into two. I believe, as I have said, that you have prepared yourselves for the communion service. I believe that you have uh, found your partners, especially for those uh, brethren who are single. As we depart from this house of worship for a while, let us remember that this washing of our feet is not just, does not only talk about cleaning our feet. It goes beyond. This symbolizes the cleansing, a second chance for us actually, or let me say many chance for us to have this kind of washing ourselves that Christ has ordained for us. Washing our unfilthiness, making us, those filthiness makes us unworthy before the presence of the Holy God. And let us remember that we have to humble ourselves. Let me remind each one the words of Jesus Christ in Matthew chapter 15, chapter 18. He said, if anyone amongst you have sinned against you what shall we do go to him go to her don't wait for him or for her to come to you our part is to to go near to them and talk to them and if they will listen the lord will will be very much happy for them because we have one a soul Brethren, let us remember what Christ has done for us and this privilege that he has given us to be partakers of the flesh and the blood that he has spent on that cross for you and me. I am urging everyone to stand with me and I am encouraging also for those who have not yet uh, prepared themselves to join we are we are making a communion service an open communion even for those visitors who are not with us in this faith if they would like to join let them join nobody of us can can say no to anyone who would like to to join because christ said we don't know what our what are in their hearts. So I am now again requesting everyone to stand with me. So we will have a prayer. Our loving Father God in heaven, we come to you, dear Lord, with this uncleanness in our hearts. We recognize, O oh Lord, that we are not really worthy before your holy throne. You are righteous. You are wicked. We are full of sinfulness in our hearts. We are full of unfilthiness, O oh Lord. That makes us not really worthy before him. But yet, we sometimes could feel ourselves very proud enough 
to present ourselves before you. Now we come to you, the Lord, with bowed hands, recognizing these spiritual things, recognizing our unworthiness before you. Oh Lord, we will be going out with our partners. And we will be reminiscing those things that you have done to your disciples in the young. And then later, we will be partaking the symbolisms of your flesh and the blood that you have given for us. I pray dear God, that through your grace and by your mercies, that love that you have extended despite of our unworthiness. We will always remember, dear Lord, these things. But we have to humble ourselves. We, have, we need not to be jealous with our brethren or to anybody. Help us, O Lord, recognize this unfaithfulness in us. Thank you so much, Lord, for the assurance of your Holy Spirit in the midst of us as we continue to do this endless. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.